All right, good afternoon. <clears throat> this is John Krupa here, the host of the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. We have a case today out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. This guy's been missing since 1993. He was a lawyer, and his name is David Lee. Branton. Not much is known about this man, but we're going to tell you what we know about him and draw him at the same time on today's episode of the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. Join me, John Krupa, as we tell you a little bit about this missing lawyer since 1993 from Allentown, Pennsylvania. All right, guys. I got this information off the Charlie Project. We're going to draw this guy. Tell you a little bit about his story. Little is known. About this man's story. Missing since January 7th. 1993 from Allentown, Pennsylvania. This classification is endangered missing. He is a male. He is white. His date of birth is 1960. So that would make him about 63 years old today. Age he was when he went missing. He was 32. His height and weight were 5'10 and 170 pounds. Medical conditions. Branton has a history of substance abuse and he is required to take medication for said abuse. For unspecified reasons and didn't have it with him when he vanished. Distinguishing characteristics are he is Caucasian, he is male, he has brown hair, he has blue hazel eyes, Branton wears eyeglasses. Most of the time he was not pictured on this picture with eyeglasses. The details of his disappearance are as follows. Branton was last seen leaving the Allentown Racquetball Club at 6th and Union Streets in Allentown, Pennsylvania at approximately 11 a.m. on January 7th, 1993. When his roommate returned to their apartment in the 20 block of North 16th Street that evening, he noticed Branton's car parked across the street instead of it in its usual place behind the building. All of Branton's possessions, including his medicine, 
and clothes were inside the apartment, but there was no sign of them. <clears throat> Brenton has never been seen or heard from again. His roommate reported him missing several days later. He has a history of leaving town, but he had always stayed in touch with his friends and family in the past before this. When police searched his car and apartment, they found no evidence indicating his whereabouts. He is a graduate of Lehigh University and Temple University Beasley School of Law and had a law office in the 900 block of Hamilton Street in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Branton's case remains unsolved. So immediately you might think maybe the roommate had something to do with it or the roommate was a male or maybe one of his clients might, he might have went south with a relationship with a client. Who knows what happened to this man? He was a 36-year-old man with a male roommate, which is, it's not your everyday thing in 1990. Most people that have roommates are like 20-some teenagers. They're kind of old to have a roommate, don't you think? I don't know, but he did, was said to skip town a lot, so he had a different kind of lifestyle. I don't know what that lifestyle is. I'm not alleging anything. I'm just saying it was not your average lifestyle, in my opinion. What happened to this man? We got some reports from Reddit. This case is incredibly mysterious with almost no details available from most sources. Branton's family has apparently made few efforts to publicize this disappearance. However, one person has put significant effort into compiling information about Branton, a high school classmate of his. <clears throat> Branton was born on July 17, 1960. His father was a pediatrician and his family was socially prominent. He graduated from Allen High School in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown is a small city located in eastern PA, about an hour's drive from Philly. In his high school, he was a good student who was involved in many extracurricular activities, including serving as class president and competing in swimming and golf. Branton's high school classmates remember him as possessed... Remembered, remembered him as possessed of a biting, sarcastic wit. He also recalls that Branton's frequently expressed homophobic attitudes towards men he perceived to be gay. So he had an outspoken hatred of gay people but yet he lived 
with a male roommate. I find that very ironic, if you ask me. I I am not uh, talking crap on him. I'm just saying that's that's straight. Uh, I don't. That bothers me. That that really bothers me. And uh, expressed homophobic attitudes, which he conveyed. Frequently, they said his friends. Brandon graduated from Lehigh University with a bachelor's in American Studies and attended law school at Temple University. He appears to have been admitted to the bar around 1986 when he was. 26 years old. Few details are available regarding Branton's life between 86 and his disappearance in 93. Branton worked as a lawyer and at the time of his disappearance worked at a law practice at 921 Hamilton Street in Allentown, PA. Sources are unclear as to which type of law he practiced or whether the practice was a group or solo practice. Most of the lawyers nowadays practice in groups, but that might have been different back in 93. They all do the group thing now, though, the lawyers nowadays. Towards the end of his life, it seems Branton had a small practice of solo cases. Working solo. Taking small cases of various kinds based on court needs. In 85, when he was 25, Branton was the victim of a mugging and an abduction at knife point. Perpetrators were brothers named Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. They forced Branton to withdraw $175 in cash from an ATM and then drive them to a house where they purchased drugs. Branton was quoted in a 1990 article as the special project coordinator for the Lehigh Valley Red Cross AIDS Service Center, saying that he'd survey surveyed volunteers with the program and found that they primarily chose to volunteer because it made them feel good. You're doing the right thing, he told the volunteers. Your work is really appreciated. That's interesting that he got involved with the AIDS charity, too. That, um... It's not your average person gets involved with AIDS charities in the early 90s. I know I was alive in the early 90s. I was just a teenager, but I didn't know many people that were involved with AIDS charities. That's something different. Branton had a problem with drug abuse, according to his roommate. It wasn't unusual for Branton to disappear for as long as a week, only to reappear. His sister said that his family often didn't hear from him or from him for months. In 91, he was cited for public 
drunkenness. So he, he, this guy liked to drink, he liked to be involved in um, foundations that provided uh, help for good causes. It seemed like he was active in the community. He also was through a lot of crap too. Got attempted mugging, which is not fun. That has happened to me, so I know. That'll leave you with some PTSD. I'll, give you, I'll tell you that. Let's take it from someone that knows. Who has first-hand experience. And his was uh, held at knife point. He had to actually go somewhere with the abductors, which is way more involved than what happened to me. The time of his disappearance, Brandon was living with a roommate on the 20 block of North 16th Street in Allentown, PA. He was last seen leaving the Allentown Racquetball Club at 6th and Union Streets in Allentown, Pennsylvania at approximately 8, 11 a.m. on January 7th, 1993. So we know he was active. He liked sports. He played racquetball. I didn't seem to be like a boring guy at all, I'll tell you that. Definitely into a lot of stuff. When his roommate returned to the apartment that evening, he noticed Branton's car was parked across the street instead of its usual place behind the building. All of Branton's possessions, including his medicine and clothes, were inside the apartment, but there was no sign of him. His roommate waited several days and finally reported him missing. Since Branton had disappeared before, you could see why he waited. Yeah. That makes sense. Brand's family apparently initially believed that he had vanished of his own accord. A news article states Lancaster Branton's sister was hesitant to discuss her brother's disappearance or the family's experience since then. She said she and her relatives were skeptical that publicity could do more than rekindle the pain they've tried to overcome. At the time of his disappearance, Brandon was 5'10", and he was 170 pounds with light brown hair, and he was 32 years old. Could Brandon's disappearance be related to his drug problem? I wonder whether the mugging that happened to Brandon when he was 25 could have been related to an attempt by Brandon to buy drugs. Could he have gotten ripped off and killed. Could his disappearance be related to homophobia or an AIDS infection? 
perhaps due to cognitive symptoms of the disease. We may never know. However, I find it tragic that no one seems to be looking for him. Well, just because he was involved with AIDS, he was an AIDS activist, I guess you would say. That doesn't mean he had AIDS, but... I can see where the author of that Reddit article is going. He may have thought that he was a, a closet... A closet gay man. Um, I'm not saying that. Uh, that's what the author of that Reddit article was... Uh, I believe, in my opinion, was inferring without saying without saying it. But you need more concrete evidence to make a claim like that. That's probably why he didn't come out right and say it. It is interesting, though, he was involved with AIDS activism, and he did have a roommate when he was 30-some years old, and he had concrete ideas of being anti-gay. I don't know, but I think maybe... I kind of like the theory where uh, he may have contracted AIDS. Um, he could have been into more than just drinking. He could have been doing like n drugs that required needles. Back in the early 90s, you could get AIDS from more than one way. You didn't, you didn't necessarily have to be gay to get AIDS. Did he contract AIDS from a dirty needle or something like that? And just disappear because he didn't want to be shamed? Because back in the 90s, if you had AIDS, it was like a death sentence where you were... The a public perception was that you were going to die. And it was going to be not a fun death either. But, over the years, public perception of that has changed. I don't know, that's what I got for you this week, uh, this week's case. I haven't been, uh, around, been getting involved with a lot of different other things going on in my life, but still managed to eke out a video here. And like I said, guys, any kind of tip, if you know anything about this guy... Even if it's insignificant, you think, if you know anything, you've got to contact the Allentown police or these places here. You can take a screenshot of that, guys. Or Allentown police, too. Till then, this is John Krupa signing out. Please do something nice for somebody today. It is infectious, guys, when you do something nice for somebody. Others see it, and they want to do something nice to, for somebody else in turn. Guys, this is John Krupa, Freedom to Draw and Solve Mysteries. Peace out.